All right, guys, so today we're going to be taking off the three-point hitch and putting it back on again. All right, guys, so today we're going to be taking off the three-point hitch and putting it back on again. Now, you may think that that is a very simple process and you don't need a how-to for that, and you may be right, but we have some uh, new tractor owners out there that are trying to figure these things out, as well as some guys like me who are always trying to figure out a few tips and tricks to make it just a little bit easier. I take it off anytime I'm using my backhoe, so I, I've gotten quite a bit of practice at taking it on and off, so I'm going to show you a couple of the things that I've learned that might make it just a little bit easier for you. Hope you enjoy the video. So the first thing, when you're ready to take your three-point hitch off, you need to lower it down so that this pin right here will clear when you remove it. And I actually take this one off first. Very simple. And as I do this, I always put everything back just the way that it was on the tractor. I always put everything back together. That way it's all nice and neat when I'm ready to put it back together. I haven't lost any pieces. So as we do that, now here's the first tip I'm going to share with you. These little split rings that come on this uh, originally, and I put these on here just for illustrative purposes, but this is what comes with the kit. And I despise them. So what we're going to do when we take it off is throw those away and we're going to replace them with these pins right here. You can pick them up at Tractor Supply for like 99 cents and a whole lot quicker and easier for the process. So um, I've actually struggled with these split rings for a while and I got sick of it, so I stopped and picked me up some of these pins so that I can change them out. Now, they're not terrible to work with, and some of you may prefer the split rings just because maybe they're a little more secure, I don't know, but I'm going to use these pins right here because it just makes it a whole lot easier. So, we pop those pins off, and as I take these out, I always just take them and stick them right back through and stick my pin back on. That way they're together and we don't lose any. Now, once we got those bars loose, we've got this little hair clip right here. Slide it out and pull that pin out. Take this off, put it right back in there. Put it right back together just like that. All right, now, the next thing you're going to do is slide those two together and pull these two inner bushings to the side, or whatever you want to call them. Then you're going to slide this bar right into the hole on one side and out. I always take these right here and I just put them on the end of this top link pin. That way they're always in the same place. I leave these put together and take them and set them on my tractor disc so that they're ready to go when I'm ready to put them back on. Now, installation, it's very simple just the opposite order. So before you put this in, you're gonna take these two little bushings or whatever you call them right here. Slide those on, slide it into one hole and over into there. Take these, put them in, into position right there. And you'll notice they have just a little flat spot right there and that goes up. Slide that right in there. Slide these back apart. This right here, Take your hairpin back out. Take this little pin out of the way. This goes right in there just like that. Now, one little note about this right here is it can be installed either direction. So when you're putting your three point together, just note that sometimes some of your implements will pull this thing up to where this interferes with your PTO shaft. And if it does and it rubs, all you have to do is take these Clevis is loose, flip this upside down, and you'll hook it in from the bottom and put this pin over the top. It works exactly the same way, and it doesn't matter which way it goes. So honestly, when you're putting yours together, it might even be best to put it in upside down. I've never ran mine that way because I've never had any interference, but I know some guys have. Now, this just raises up like so. Put your pin in. Bingo. This one. 
and I always put them in from the outside and put the clips on the inside. This part right here, very simple. This U-shape goes down, so you just slide it right on there, put this through there, in and go through both. You go now this is to hold your top link up so when you want to raise your top link and lock it into position just raise that up and press it onto those that pin right there and it'll hold your top link in position and there you have it you're ready to attach to your three-point implement now, while i've got you here i thought i'd share a, a couple of other things that i've added to my tractor that i really like um, the first being this bluetooth speaker right here this is called an oontz speaker o-o-n-t-z and it comes in Kubota orange, so you can't beat that. Got me a couple of little bungee cords from Harbor Freight, and it's rechargeable. So when I'm mowing the grass or working out in the field or whatever, I've got Bluetooth tunes that I can turn on right here. Lasts for several hours and plays good volume, so you can hear it over the tractor running and everything. So about 20 bucks, 25 bucks, you got a nice little Bluetooth speaker that matches the tractor. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now, everybody with one of these little Kubota BX tractors knows that there's not enough tool space. Um, I guess this is your toolbox, this in the armrest here. Um, you know, I got Teflon tape and a couple of bolts in mine and it's full, so that doesn't work. You gotta have a place to store some chains and pliers and uh, wrenches to adjust your uh, three-point stabilizers and that sort of thing. So uh, I had to find a place to put me a toolbox and I wanted a, a decent size, like a 50 cal ammo can or something like that. So um, I picked one up and decided to try to figure out where to mount it. Now, a lot of guys go with this spot right here, but what I found is it, it would interfere with me raising and lowering my ROPS the way that I want to. Of course, the BX23S ROPS is made different than some of the 2380s and 2680s and the, the, because it has a taller hoop. So. The pins and everything are in a different location. So the other thing that I didn't want is something sticking out further than my tractor and my tire for when I'm doing work on tight trails and all of that. I just didn't feel like this was the best place for a toolbox for me. Now, the place that I chose is not going to be the best for everybody because it does interfere with a little bit of your space in your tractor cab. And if you have an actual cab, then it's, it would interfere with that. So that wouldn't work. Um, and it changes the way you have to get on and off of your tractor. But I found that it works really well for me. And that is I mounted it right here beside the foot pedal. Now it all looks pretty tight, but I'm gonna show you why this works for me. Now, this little toolbox, I've got, I've got my chain, my wrench, and a rag, a couple other things down in there, fence wires. Yeah. Um, and all I did was drill four holes through the bottom of it, put some silicone on my bolts, and shoved them down in there and tightened it up to seal it up. And at Real King, they had it in black, so it matches the whole setup, and I thought it works out well. But I'm going to show you with the box in this position how it works with your controls and getting on and off of the tractor so that it doesn't interfere. If I'm getting on my tractor from this left side, then all I do is I put my foot up here to climb on. So I just come in like this and open. And you know, I'm a pretty small guy, pretty limber, so it doesn't really bother me. It's not in the way of me using the brake. It works just fine. I haven't felt like it's in my way any at all while I'm working. So I like that. Now, it, did, it took a little bit of getting used to because it is in your way. You know, you go to jump off right here, then you've got to dismount differently. So, you know, if you're gonna come off on this side, then you may need to tilt your wheel, which, you know, depends on where you run your, your wheel. But if you get your wheel up, it's really no big deal. Um, and while I'm working, I really never think anything about it. I just hop off and away we go. Um, most of the time I get off on the other side and that's that. But uh, that kind of shows you how this is going to work. It may not be for you, but I found that it works pretty well for me. I thought I would share it. Some of you will love it, some of you will hate it, and that's cool. Everybody needs to do what works for them. But here's another idea for a toolbox if anybody's interested. So that's gonna do it for today. I hope I shared a couple of things that will help you guys out, maybe give you some things to try, or maybe save you just a little bit of time if you picked up anything that you're not already doing. Now, if you watched me and you thought, well, 
I've got this tip and this trick that he's not doing. Share them with me. If you've got things that uh, make the process even easier, jump in the comments and uh, share those comments because uh, if you put that in the comments, then people will read those and they'll get some help out of your, your tips and tricks as well. So appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoy the video. Everybody have a good day. Thank you.